I have been so impressed with ChatGPT's intelligence that I'm convinced that it's a Google killer. Just imagine what it will be capable of a few versions down the line. And then ask yourself, would you ever really go to Google for a list of links? When ChatGPT can present to you anything that you want without links and in a natural human conversation style. So following that logic, I predict in two years that Microsoft's ChatGPT will evolve into something so useful that it will forever unseat Google's decade-long search dominance. So in this video, I'm gonna lay out all of the reasons why I think ChatGPT has changed search forever and explain why I believe that means Microsoft can wrestle away more than 80% of Google search traffic in 24 months. I love when I can see something coming. I know it's a bold statement, but I have my reasons to back it up. Google's mission statement is to organize the world's information. And I find it ironic because I think that Microsoft is gonna beat them to it. This is how Microsoft is going to steal 80 percent of Google's traffic in the next 24 months. The incredible natural language processing that ChatGPT is capable of. I can't emphasize enough how convenient it is to ask a search box in natural language tone what you want and to have the response come to you in the way that a human would respond. Now on top of that, the other thing that makes it so much more powerful than the Google search box that brings you a list of links is that it can handle complex queries in a way that I've just never seen Google be able to do before. It's absolutely incredible when you actually sit down with this engine what it's capable of. So unlike traditional search engines like Google that really rely on keywords, it's matching you to the best result. This is a different paradigm. And look, I've played with some natural language processors before, GPT-3 being the best one that I knew of until this week. But ChatGPT really feels different and it acts different. ChatGPT is able to understand the meaning and the context behind your query and give you a relevant and reasonable response. It's incredible to make a search query, in a sense, get an answer back and it's not what you want, and then to correct it by simply saying, no, now do it this way. But it's this sense of memory that's really sinking in that is feeling like something totally new to the way I search the internet for information. Like a real life chat, I can simply say, give me more details or go on or now give it to me in a different tone or rewrite what you just did with a different accent or a different language. And it just remembers what you were talking about like a human. This is unlike anything that I've ever typed into Google. I like it because I just don't feel like I'm putting so much effort into thinking about how to query something, trying to get back the results that I expect from Google. There's no games being played. I'm talking to the interface the way I would talk to a person. And when I'm not getting the results I want, I'm just simply adding information or asking for variations and getting honed in on what I actually want. And speaking of things that I actually want, that would be more subscribers. So as of right now, we're at 837 subscribers and I'm so excited to see this community continue to grow. So I would appreciate it if you wanna hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, press that bell. It would really make a big difference to me. Now back to the video. All right, now let's talk about the virtuous cycle that Microsoft might be getting themselves into. Now, another advantage that GPT has is its ability to grow and learn over time. Now, I'm not saying Google searches haven't evolved over time and the code has got better and they've added new elements, but it's a different beast with GPT. As more people use ChatGPT's interface, it learns about how to interact with people the way people want to interact with it. It will be able to gather unique and important information, giving it a wealth of data about how to better understand the people that actually query it for information and what they're looking for. So unlike Google, which is getting better over time at pairing you with information, ChatGPT is getting better at giving you accuracy. Like in the same way these large language models have become so accurate by actually producing something, getting feedback from real people, essentially tagging good data so that it knows how to reconfigure its neural network. We're now training it in that same virtuous cycle. And when I think about how profitable and powerful that is, it's unbelievable. I've seen this virtuous cycle only a handful of times. In Facebook's early days, the more people that joined the network, the more powerful it became. In the case of Tesla, the more cars they give it more data, the more corrections it gets from the steering wheel, the more it can improve self-driving, and it has a runaway flywheel effect that I don't think anyone will catch up to. In a previous video, I even argued that MetaQuest Pro is going to give Facebook maybe a virtuous cycle like that, and that's why I would not count out Meta from being a big player in the future. But this virtuous cycle, I'm the most confident in, because the break 
breakthrough that is chat GPT is actually just the general pre-transformer story coming along and getting iteratively better based on people's feedback. And now it's providing so much value that people are flocking to use it and then give it even more data. So I suspect that the snowball has already hit critical mass, even though it might not feel like it yet because it still seems so new. In addition to its ability to provide more accurate and relevant results, their chat GPT could also make the search process more convenient. It's also not stressful to add nuance to a long query. Like with Google, if I'm not getting the result I want, I keep adding keywords and I keep kind of tweaking the text. And to some degree over my lifetime, I've learned to kind of massage it in a way that it can give me the results that I'm looking for. But refining your query with chatbot isn't stressful. It's like having a conversation with someone where you just directly them towards what you really wanted because they kind of misinterpreted you the first time. And as user-friendly as it's been so far typing into the chat interface with text to dictation, I know that actually speaking with my voice in this manner is completely natural. So as soon as I'm really comfortable with how chat GPT works, maybe a couple more iterations down the road, talking to it in real time is going to be so convenient. And even if I think about doing a Google search with my voice, it's still a little wonky. I'm still thinking about the keywords that I'm saying, I'm leaving spaces in there because I know that I'm not actually asking a question. I'm actually giving keywords to try to get relevant sources. And realistically, the one thing that's kept people going to google.com and not to any other URLs for search is its convenience and its accuracy. And when I think of the future of chat GPT, I think more convenient and more accurate. Okay, I can already hear you saying, look at Google's engineering team, their deep pockets, their unmatched data sources, and their army of talented engineers. And also DeepMind, the best AI engineers in the world. How could Google not see ChatGPT and they might be building their own behind the scenes and with their data and putting it on the homepage of Google, how could they not just hatch right up to Microsoft? In fact, probably surpass them because they can introduce it to more people quicker. And my simple reply is, it's not enough. It's just not enough to catch up to a first mover advantage. I mean, there's definitely certain ways Google could keep their dominance. Now, I'm making a prediction, I think well over 50%. In my head, it's kind of an 80-20 sort of guess as to if Microsoft can actually unseat Google. But there's still 20% there where I think Google has plenty of chance to keep their dominance. And I don't see any other of the major tech companies doing it, if not Microsoft and Google. And I know it seems like too early to say Microsoft has won because look at how far away they are. But I'm telling you, I think this train has already left the station. So ChatGPT sits on top of Microsoft's cloud servers, which are top of the line, and they are already starting to crash. There are so many people and it's only spreading by word of mouth at this point. It's just one of those things where everyone who tries it, they play with it for a few minutes, their mind gets blown and they tell other people. The word of mouth is going to make it spread like wildfire. It has only been out for a week and a half. That data that they've been collecting in the last week and a half, I'm sure they haven't had enough time to get that training data and tag it, put it back into the next model, put it on the supercomputer, train all of the parameters, and then download it. So right now, they're just in collection process. So wait for that next iteration or the iteration after that, and it will be so much better than Google. And exponentials are just nasty things. And when you're behind a little bit right now, you're behind a lot tomorrow and you're unbelievably far behind the day after that. And to Google's credit, I am not saying that ChatGPT is artificial general intelligence. It is not the end all be all. And the other big tech companies each have niches where I think they are gonna completely dominate. Logistics to Amazon, VR to Meta, and vehicles to Tesla. And at the very end of the day, even Google's DeepMind division might be the leading contender for AGI, artificial general intelligence. And if they are the first to succeed at that, probably not even fair to say that they'll be the world's richest company. They will make search irrelevant. They will make self-driving cars irrelevant. They will make logistics irrelevant and VR irrelevant because AGI is the end all of end alls. But right now you have to think about it from a company point of view, google.com with this new technology now on the market in a sense is a liability. It's a gigantic cruise ship and it's hard to completely pivot and turn directions. So right now Google handles an incredibly astonishing 8.5 billion searches per day. That's 99,000 searches every second and it accounts for more than 91% of the searches across the entire internet. Trying to point out is one of the advantages that ChatGPT has right now is 
that it's a new way to interact with the internet, and they're not bogged down by people thinking it's supposed to do something. It's new. So it's not known for anything yet, hence, there's no expectations that you need to cannibalize. And even if you want to argue with that and you say, okay, people know that Google's a technology company, they will most likely all adapt to a new interface. Then you still need to acknowledge from a business point of view, the way their entire system works with advertisers is matching it to keywords and links. And if those get replaced overnight with something like chat GPT inside the Google search bar, then they also have to reinvent the entire ad system, which is the vast majority of all of Alphabet and Google's profit. Now, Google made more than $200 billion in ad revenue. Now, I know some of that's also YouTube, but when you think about that search bar and the ads that come on the side, holy cow, that is a big hit. And if they overnight update the way that their system works to make it more convenient, wow, how are they going to get all of that money back? It's going to take a while. And if I'm Microsoft and I'm thinking, wow, they have to rebuild all of their advertising to fit into a system like ours, you know what we should do is start building that in right now because that same first mover advantage, if they can take advantage of how advertising will work with the new model, they have a potentially $200 billion profit waiting for them. So if I'm Satya Nandela and I'm the CEO of Microsoft, I would be thinking right now about how much of that $200 billion you could siphon away if you build an ad network right now to fit into chat GPT. So if I'm wrong and Google does keep their search dominance, they'll have to both change their search bar to work in a more natural and convenient way, which might be possible, and figure out how to survive the downtime when the ad revenues completely plunge until they can reconfigure it and plug it back into the new way people want to interact with the internet. And although very reasonable to think that they might pull that off, it will be painful even if you do think that I'm wrong about Microsoft. And as of right now, I don't even have a vision for how advertising would work with the chat GPT type thing. I mean, I guess like right when it's like texting out your reply, it would just put some asterisks around something and say, and if you like that, check this out. So, I mean, it would be powerful at figuring out what kind of products you want, but I don't even know if that's the future I want. I think personally, I'd rather pay like 10 or $15 a month for access to something like chat GPT. And I just say, I don't want advertisement in there at all. I don't want you messing with the results. I want you incentivized to give me the actual information that helps me the best. But what about Amazon, you might be saying, because Amazon's an interesting, maybe dark horse option. In the traditional search game, they are making huge strides into Google. And that $200 billion that I was talking about, Amazon has very highly sought after customers typing queries into their search bar at amazon.com. And their search division has a bright road ahead of it to take a lot of that money because they have great eyeballs and advertisers aren't spending as much there as they are on YouTube and on Google. So so Amazon could make a play for this, but they have to reinvent it also. They have to reinvent search in the same way the chat GPT is thinking about large language models. And because of that first mover advantage, I actually think that if anything, Microsoft's in a position to not only eat into Google's ad revenue, I think they're going to be better at pushing you to products and selling them to you. Now, they don't have the big logistical system. I don't know if they would potentially need to partner with Amazon or with something like Shopify, but if they did that, that system is going to be so much better. I mean, imagine shopping with a future chat GPT. It makes a lot more sense. Hey, I'm looking for new shoes. What's cool this season? Can you help me find something that fits me? It just would know how to respond so much better. And it's so much better than tweaking and being like, oh, that was good. But simply kind of refine your previous conversation in a way that Google or Amazon search has not been able to do. Providing product recommendations based on their interests and previous purchase histories. They can answer questions about the products, the shipping, and the returns all in a natural language. And also AI powered voice assistants can be used to help shoppers search for and purchase products all using voice commands. Hey, I love this, bill it to my credit card. Additionally, some of those follow up questions because ChatGPT has such a long memory of your conversation, that information is not really even included in the kind of metadata that Google and Amazon are getting. So that means from a retail point of view, they have a better understanding of what didn't work for you before, what you actually wanted before you you made that purchase, helping them refine the products that they want to stock and the way they want to interact with their customer, right? And then they're personalizing their marketing and sales efforts. They're refining and honing in all of those things and refining it all on an individual level, perfectly customized for your needs. So it sounds weird to say this out loud, but I really just believe it and I want to share it with you, but I think Google is in a lot of trouble. 
I honestly think the odds are stacked against Google keeping the dominant player position in search. And I'm not saying that with like a long, vague timeline like a lot of other people might. I'm saying 24 months. In two years, I think that Google loses 80% of search to Microsoft. Hold me to the fire. I will apologize if I'm wrong. I just, I see it coming and I just for some reason have confidence and I want to share it with you. And I have seen the word of mouth. I think that momentum is going to swing upwards at an incredible trajectory. And I think it's going to ramp up to the point where within 24 months, it will handle 99,000 requests per second. If you like this content, hit the like button, press subscribe, make a comment, hit the bell, do all of those things, help teach this algorithm that this channel is worth watching. And as promised, here is an image generated by Midjourney V4 of a deck of cards swimming in a sea of avocado. Thanks for the prompt, user Jen Kramer. And if you'd like me to take one of your prompts and generate it into an image, throw it in the comments below. And why don't you click on one of these videos that's being recommended to you right now because we always have cool things to talk about here at Curious Future. <laughs>